Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition. Um, before we start, I just want to ask a couple questions. Do you suffer from gut issues or any other health condition and you walk around with your mobile phone in your pocket while it's switched on? Are you glued to your electronic devices which are all connected to the Wi-Fi router in the corner of the room? Or are you using your laptop while it's on your lap? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you seriously need to reconsider what you are doing because the radiation that is emitted from these devices is potentially screwing with your microbiome. In this video, we are going to look at some of the limited research available um, on how non-native electromagnetic frequencies such as those emitted from mobile phones and Wi-Fi routers are essentially capable of disrupting the balance of bacteria which lives on and inside the human body. Now, there's been lots of research in the past looking at how um, these, these, these frequencies, these sources of radiation are damaging to human cells and we are not gonna cover that today. All I can say on that for the moment is that it's not good and it's been implicated in many different kinds of diseases such as cancer. So we know that human cells actually are generating their own EMF, their own electromagnetic frequencies, and this is potentially one of the ways in which they coordinate their functions. But we know the same thing about bacteria. There is actually some research to suggest that bacteria are generating their own EMF in the form of biophotons, and that these potentially help help to coordinate the way that these bacteria essentially live and how they function and how they communicate with one another. Okay, so natural EMF is very important. And when you introduce an artificial form of EMF into this tight-knit system, this is potentially going to cause problems. So Dietrich Klinkart has spoken about in the past about how mold species can actually release exponentially higher amounts of biotoxins or mycotoxins um, which can be dangerous for human health when they are exposed to EMF. So EMF is potentially making mold a lot more harmful for human beings than it would have been previously. And now in a similar way to mold, it seems that bacteria also are very responsive to the natural EMF environment and any artificial EMF they are exposed to. So first of all, let's look at E. coli. E. coli is a member of the commensal flora and seems to be a part of practically everyone's gut. However, there are certain pathogenic strains which can be fatal and when there is an overabundance of E. coli in the gut, it appears to be associated with inflammatory bowel disease and other kinds of chronic gut dysfunction. So if we look at the effect that E. coli or the effects of EMF on E. coli, it's very interesting. There is research to show that when you expose E. coli to radio frequencies generated by mobile phones and Wi-Fi signals, it actually causes the E. coli to grow, grow faster than it would do in a natural environment. The same thing also applies to another potential pathogen called Listeria, okay? Now, these findings have been corroborated by another study on E. coli, which showed an elevated rate of glucose metabolism and faster growth rate. Now, you might be thinking, this is not a problem because we have antibiotics, right? Well, you would be wrong because that same study actually showed that E. coli within a certain window of exposure, which was approximately six hours, that it became more resistant to antibiotics, okay? What it essentially meant was that when you exposed it to these EMFs, it was less able, the antibiotics were less able to kill it off. The authors concluded 
Considering our results, we believe that Wi-Fi and mobile exposure can serve as physical methods to alter antibacterial susceptibility of microorganisms. Now, in our modern world, with an epidemic of superbugs such as MRSA, this is potentially a major problem and it makes you wonder whether the, um, the antibiotic resistance is actually caused by the fact that we are bathing ourselves in radiation that wasn't there 200 years ago. Now you'd be excused for thinking that increasing the growth rate of a potential pathogen is not a good thing. But you might also be wondering, does it increase the growth rate, growth rate of the beneficial bacteria as well? Well, although there's not much research, it actually seems to do the opposite. So you have these probiotic bacteria, which are supposedly meant to be really good for your health. They help with your immunity, your digestion, and overall gut health. And these have actually been very well studied and well researched over the past couple of decades. Two of the most well researched forms are Lactobacillus plantarum and Lactobacillus rhamnosus, which both have very good clinical efficacy in terms of treating GI disorders. Now, one research, one research study actually showed that when you expose these two bacteria to radiofrequency EMF, um, it actually showed that there was a significant reduction in the amount of cells belonging to both strains, and this effect increased with the frequency of radiation. So it was theorized that the radiation actually had an oxidative effect on cells, increasing free radical damage and increasing oxidative stress. So it seems that it doesn't necessarily have a very good effect on certain bacteria, which are supposedly beneficial. Research also shows that when you expose certain bugs to this radiation, you essentially poke holes in the cell membrane. And this might be a good thing if it was pathogen only, but the problem is I think this is indiscriminate, which means that you are potentially gonna compromise your microbiome and really mess with the good bugs that help you to st stay healthy. It's not only bacteria that are affected by EMF. In fact, you also have various strains of yeast which occupy the gut, such as Candida. And whilst there's not much research on Candida specifically, there, are, there is research on other strains of yeast which do not colonize the gut, but which are considered to be transient. One of those belongs to the Saccharomyces family, and there was one study which actually showed that it activated a stress response in this form of yeast and increased the rate of glucose metabolism. There was another, there was another study which showed at different levels of power and different frequencies of radiation actually could significantly reduce the growth rate. Okay, so even though this, this type of yeast is not necessarily um, colonizing the gut, what we see here is that yeast is also responsive to EMF and there is a very good possibility that the yeast which does occupy our gut is also responding to that. But aside from the gut, the skin is also a house for lots of bacteria and the balance of those bacteria um, appear to be involved in protecting the skin barrier and actually preventing colonization by uh, opportunistic pathogens. Okay, so balance appears to be key. And unfortunately, that balance also appears to be thrown off by EMF exposure. There was one research paper which showed that the growth of staphylococci actually was suppressed in certain individuals while it was enhanced in others. And the authors concluded that the disruption of the balanced skin microbiome was basically making it more vulnerable to opportunistic infection. So although there is not much more research on this topic, it seems clear that EMF exposure is causing an imbalance in some way. We can see from the little research that it's potentially increasing the growth rate of pathogens. It's potentially decreasing the viability of known probiotics 
and it's also messing with skin microbiome. Now, that's enough evidence for me to know that avoiding EMF is probably a good idea. With this in mind, I would highly recommend that if you use a mobile phone, turn it off when it's not in use. Turn it onto airplane mode. If you're using a laptop or a computer, do not use a Wi-Fi signal. Actually use an ethernet cable instead. And any of your electronic devices, try to minimize exposure. These things are not difficult to do. And unfortunately in our modern world, we can't completely um, get away from this kind of radiation, but we can do our best to mitigate our exposure in some way. Go outside, stop using your electronic device, and if you do, take the necessary precautions to reduce your exposure to these frequencies. Because in the long run, I honestly don't think that they are gonna be doing you any benefit. So that's all for today. I am sorry there wasn't much solid evidence in this video because unfortunately there doesn't seem to be much available. Um, it's quite an understudied topic. But from the little that is available, I think it's clear um, that these things aren't good. And I hope the audience can appreciate that and will kind of take note of this message and start changing the way that they're living their lives. Now, if you like this video or you found it helpful, please share it. Because quite frankly, there's not many people who talk about this and it's really important. The credit goes out really to Dr. Jack Cruz because he's been talking about this for years. And if you're not familiar with his work, then I highly recommend going over to his page and checking it out because he's got some fantastic stuff. There's also several researchers in the field of the science who like for instance Dr. Martin Paul and he's got some fascinating papers on the effects that EMF is actually having on human cells. So again share the video, uh, like and subscribe to my page. You can find me on Facebook as EO Nutrition and my website uh, is www.eonutrition.co.uk. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.